All right, we're back. So I have a single sheet PDF document that we're gonna use. Um, I'm sending it to myself from my iPad, my personal iPad. Um, I airdropped it. And so I get to choose where I wanna put it. I wanna use Fourscore. So I tap on that and voila, there we are. So uh, the nice part about band is you typically tend to get your own part. You don't have to worry about um, shifting through lines of uh, music to figure out which line is mine. Now, I'm also a choral person by training, so um, typically I have to count down lines, but if you are a musician playing one instrument, you typically don't have that problem unless you have a conductor score. Um, and then really the process is not all that difficult. So I'm gonna tap on the middle of the screen to bring up my toolbar. And then over here is the settings, little wheel thing. Yep, oh, it didn't tap. So tap on that. All right, now the little guy I'm looking for down here is this little button on the bottom on the right side. That's the reflow. Look what it did. Now, this also says 18. My brain thinks it missed something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the edit button in the top left corner. And we are gonna see, now I can't visually see this because um, the contrast is not great. So I'm tapping around, ah, there we go. Wow, it skipped four lines of music until it decided that was a good line to um, catch. So the tricky part about reflow is it tries, but it doesn't always find what we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is, since it was so nice to create me one, and you have to use two fingers to navigate vertically, I'm gonna hold down this little guy and move him up to the top because he's already there. Why bother? Now I'm gonna zoom in because I can't tell if he's right in line with everything. Gotta make sure I get all my notations at the top and the bottom of each line. And there we go. We have, oh, there's even, a, there's even chord markings there if you're gonna play tab. Now this was for, supposedly for trumpet. So we'll see, I'm not a trumpet player. I'm learning to play the bagpipes. So we're in our own keys and stuff. All right. So I hit the plus sign because I needed to add another zone. These little gray boxes are called zones. This is the area that it's going to magnify. So I need to come over here and shrink that down a little bit because, uh, oh, but look, that looks like a first and second ending. Great. I'm so glad that happened right here because I get to show you guys how we're gonna make this work. Yes, there is a feature in here called links and buttons. For whatever reason, it doesn't seem to work, at least not for me, um, using Reflow. Now, supposedly it does work. I haven't made it work, so if somebody from uh, Fourscore wants to tell me how to do it, please do, because I'd be very interested. Otherwise, a suggestion from a Facebook group called the Four Score Users Group on Facebook suggests that you just simply add another page. I know it seems silly to do it for just a couple of measures, but that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna zoom myself out because I can't see all that stuff. I am gonna move my box back to the repeat and I'm gonna stop right there. So now what I'm gonna do, sorry about the dog outside, He's outside. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit done. Now, it zooms us in, it looks great. It looks great. I can actually read all that stuff. I'm a couple inches away. Now, for a trumpet player, this would be awfully far away. Uh, or even a trombone player, that would be a whole lot further away. So um, maybe what I would probably consider for that particular student might be to have their, have their music stand up to head level and put their instrument underneath the music stand, kind of like point it more downward. But that would be something you guys would need to kind of play with. Um, but we need to go fix this repeat problem. So I'm gonna hit the X and get out of here to get back to my regular 
music here. Now, I'm going to go up here to my menu in the top right corner and tap on my little toolbox again. All right, now I am looking for rearrange. Tap on that. Now, the reason I did that is because I need another page. So I'm going to zoom in and all I need is the plus sign. Tap on that. I have now two pages. So now if I have another repeat, I just tend to do this as I find the, um, as I find the repeats. Um, you could do save or save as for my purpose. I'm just going to do save. You may want to do save as in case you're, you know, not marking stuff. This just says, Hey, are you sure? I am sure I'm going to override it. All right, so now that I have added another page, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into Reflow. And, you know, you may be looking at this going, okay, so I know we're gonna do the first, we've done the first ending, that's great, but what about all this other stuff? We're gonna skip it. We're gonna skip over the rest of this page and go to the next page. So I'm gonna hit the right arrow and go to page two. Now I just wanna double check, yep. So it's grayed out, which means I can't go forward anymore on the right arrow. So I got to bring my music down. Wait a minute. Hold on. Now I'm confused. Oh, check this out. So when I went to page two, it, this little guy is pretty smart. So what I'm going to do here, it went ahead and added stuff for me for the first two lines but if you notice your repeat is here and you actually need to skip the first measure so i'm going to tap on my zone and i am going to move my zone to that repeat sign so that that's out of my way and then i'm going to go down to line two move this zone over to where one starts and then i'm going to add a little zone, a little itty bitty zone. So I'm just going to shrink and make my box nice and small. And so I can move it around and make it bigger. And you can do a lot of stuff with your, with one finger, which is cool. So I'm going to zoom out a little so I can see what I'm doing. Zoom over here to my, where my repeat is. And then I also included just some of the marking just so that I know, remind myself what's going on here. Ta-da! So I skipped the first ending. I've got the second ending. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to proceed down the rest of the page. I... Let's see. Are there any more? Nope, there's no more repeats. So this is pretty straightforward, just like the first part of this document. I'm going to drag this guy here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add... All these little guys and then go back and fix them because it's a little bit faster to do that oops one at a time now because i ran out of room i really wish it wouldn't do that but it kind of sticks it right in the middle this is a skill this is a this is something that took me a while to learn how to do um as a visually impaired musician um just because it's some really minute finite looking stuff I mean, if you're, if you're a teacher and you want to help your student do that, I'm sure they would be appreciative. But the problem is you really can't do it um, other anywhere other than in this particular app in order to adjust the um, edges of things and make sure they all fit. Um, and then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my edges as close as I can so that I don't have any huge blank spaces because the other part is it tries to line things up end to end. Oops, I need to move my three, two fingers uh, as opposed to three. Um, and so when it tries to line things up end to end, oh, I cut off my measure, so I gotta bring him up a little bit more. And I wanna bring him over because otherwise I'll have blank spaces and those bug me just as, a, as I'm reading things. It just bugs me for it to not continue. So but that's just me being picky, I guess. All right. So now that we have added both 
So we have our, we skipped the beginning here and we went from our repeat to, uh, we skipped the first ending, went directly to the second ending and it went all the way through. And now I'm done, I'm gonna hit done. So what it did, if you will notice, it put my two repeats right next to each other, which is awesome. So what I'm gonna do is there is my music and it starts, oops. And I don't know what it just did. I touched the finger with two, two fingers, touched the screen with two fingers by accident. So here I've got, you know, my time signature, all the good stuff. And I've got all my notes here. I can see all my rests nice and clearly. I have a bit of a space there, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, oh, I can see my first ending clearly. And then there's my repeat. And then I start back there. And then, oh, there's my second ending. And then we just keep on cruising all the way to, and I'm zooming through here, sorry. All the way to the end. And there we go. So that is how you do handle things like repeats and you add um, music to a score. Now, I also want to show you um, when I, how I can also import things. Let's say you emailed it to me as a student. I want to, um, I think it is, yes, it's under all scores. There's an import button down at the bottom. And it automatically gives you the option for files. Now when I, so what I would do as a student is if you emailed this to me as a teacher, so you had your file in Sibelius, you created it, or, or Finale, whichever program you use, you created it. While you're doing it for everybody else, just create me a PDF of my part. And then all you have to do is email it to me, and then I would save it wherever I needed to save it. Or even better, I can just hold my finger down on it, tell it to open in Fourscore, and I'm done. Um, but you do have the option to go into your files and that kind of thing. So you'll have to navigate through the files app a little bit and that's beyond what I wanna do in this video. So I'm gonna get out of here. But um, when I did the on-screen menus earlier, or full screen menus earlier, it made this thing take up the whole thing. So now I can see all my music in here. Now, because you can do things like edit the composer and things of that sort, that's kind of a metadata thing. Um, I'll be honest with you, it's been a while since I've done it, so I'll have to show how to do it or include links or something. But this kind of just covered what I wanted to cover, just in sort of, how does refill work? How do you turn it on? How do you navigate it? The only other thing I did not cover here is a Bluetooth pedal. I use one. Uh, it really doesn't matter what Bluetooth pedal you have. I bought a $50 Bluetooth pedal off of Amazon and it works just fine. Um, but I think this should get, at least get you started. And if you have questions, feel free to shoot me an email at work. My email is nirwin at sccsdb.org. So that's nirwin at sc for South Carolina, s for school, d for deaf, b for blind.org. Thank you guys so much for your time. And I hope this was helpful.